Right, it's time for our next episode of the various sort of chemical weapons and chemical threats. What do they do and how do you protect yourself from them? And today we're going to look at chlorine gas. Now, chlorine gas is one of the most famous chemical weapons because it was the first proper chemical weapon used after tear gas. And chlorine is basically a very nasty gas that, in low quantities, is an irritant, but once you go over a certain threshold, it becomes very deadly. Now, chlorine is quite a primitive chemical agent in terms of the volume needed to kill. Um, it is quite obvious that it's coming. So basically, chlorine was first used as a weapon in World War One because Fritz Haber, um, who was a German scientist, decided, you know, it'd be a good idea to actually use the chemical industry as a weapon of war and what follows was the basically development of chemical weapons however if he hadn't come up with the idea I imagine somebody somewhere else would have done you can actually find evidence of chemical weapons being planned for use prior to World War One, but it was never actually materialized both in the American Civil War by the North and in the Crimean War by the British but they never actually followed through of their plans so what was actual chlorine gases use? well basically obviously as I said a chemical weapon but chlorine gas is also used in a lot of civilian industries. Obviously, if you have chlorine in an actual swimming pool, it's there as a disinfectant. Now, chlorine reacts with water. It's quite interesting. So, chlorine gas itself is slightly alkali, but when it contacts um, your, basically, uh, any part of you that's wet, whether it be your eyes, your throat, anything like that, the lining of your lungs, um, when it comes into contact with moisture, it starts becoming acidic, and it's that acid that will damage you. So, if it makes it simpler to understand, imagine you're inhaling something slightly acidic and that's uh, irritating all your um, organs and you know your throat and everything else. So chlorine can cause damage to your eyes, it can cause damage to your throat and breathing tract, damage to the lungs, and in high concentrations it can damage your skin, but that's kind of the least of your worries. So as I said, chlorine's a bit odd because it has a bit of a threshold where in low amounts it acts a bit like tear gas, it will really irritate your eyes, you know, throat and that, it will cause you to cough, sneeze, maybe vomit, feel nauseous, but in low concentrations it's very unlikely to kill you. But what happens is once chlorine gets into a higher concentration, um, it's very quick to choke you, asphyxiate you. Basically death by chlorine is very unpleasant. You inhale a lot of it, it gets into your lungs, it reacts with your lungs becoming acidic, basically burning the inside of your lungs, you drown in your own fluids. Um, so yeah, it's nasty stuff, like most chemical weapons, I don't think we're going to come across chemical weapons in this video, which I say in these series, you know, I say aren't nasty, that are nice, that's probably not going to happen, but yeah, chlorine is um, particularly unpleasant if inhaled. From what I understand, if enough gets in your eyes, it can cause blindness, blindness as well, just because simply it's becoming acidic and burning your eyes. Now, as said, I'm not an expert on these things. I can understand that they're bad and will kill you, so if I make mistakes in these videos, my apologies, I'm not a chemist. And when it goes into your body, I'm not a biologist, so I can't know every little detail. So if I've picked up information that's wrong, please correct me, but doing it in a correct way, where you explain why, not you are wrong because I say you are wrong. So what do you need to protect yourself from chlorine? Obviously, as always, a full face respirator. That way it won't get into your eyes or lungs. And what you um, need is filters that stop at least inorganic vapor. Now, obviously, as I've said before, the best thing to do is get ABEC P3 filters or to get sort of full on CBRN filters. The reason being, if it can protect you from multiple vapor threats, it's better than the filters specialized at one thing. But for chlorine, you only need an inorganic vapor filter because chlorine is an inorganic vapor. Generally, most inorganic vapor filters I've seen also block organic vapor because you basically, from what I understand, having activated charcoal in a filter kind of works against both organic and inorganic vapors. But Regardless, you need an inorganic vapour filter for charcoal, um, for chlorine. So obviously, the activated charcoal in the filter adsorbs the chlorine, it can't get through the vapour, and then as long as your filter doesn't run out, you're alright. Now, after World War I, chlorine unfortunately is still being used. Um, it's been used a lot in the Middle Eastern conflicts, in the Iran-Iraq war. It seems to be used in Syria by pretty much all the sides in Syria. And as said, chlorine is only efficient at killing in very uh, high volumes of the vapour, or the gas. At lower concentrations, it just sort of maims people or makes them very ill, rather than killing them. Um, the other main issue with chlorine, of course, is that while it's a bit of a primitive chemical wep weapon, it's used by a lot of industries, so your chances of coming into contact with a chemical weapon or one of these threats is actually higher with chlorine. 
simply because there's a lot of industries that use chlorine that can have chemical leaks or fires that would put chlorine into the air. So again, protection is very straightforward. You want your respirator with a combined filter on or just um, an inorganic vapour filter. You put your mask on, which I need to loosen, and this is the one that's a bit bent. So yeah, it's not very comfortable, but then at least I'd be protected from the chlorine. But as said, really, I need a different mask than this one because this old um, Bulgarian one's been a bit crushed. But inorganic vapour filters are what you need. So obviously lots of options as I've discussed before with respirators. Get an industrial one if you want where you can get um, inorganic vapour filters quite cheaply or get um, any sort of 40mm filter as long as you can find filters for it easily. 40mm uh, filter respirator. But you need inorganic filters or even better combined filters for chlorine. But yeah, that's uh, all the info really on chlorine as a chemical weapon. First used in World War One, used, you know, bottled up by both sides for World War Two. Used in the Iran-Iraq War, definitely been used in Syria so far. If you see chlorine, uh, this is worth noting, it looks to either be a sickly green or yellow kind of cloud, going anywhere to orange, depending on how well it's been made, if there's any impurities in it or whatever. But it's very visible to the eye. Basically, if you were looking down the road and you saw a big sickly green or yellow cloud coming towards you, you know to get your respirator on. So, the good thing of chlorine, at least, is that you can both see it and... well. Chlorine also can be smelt before it will be a fatal concentration, which is another good thing about protecting yourself from it. Um, supposedly, from what I've read, it smells a bit like pineapples or other fruits, so I wouldn't try and go, oh, that's chlorine, I know to put my mask on by the smell, but obviously I'd do it probably if I saw a big weird coloured cloud coming towards me and I had my respirator with me. But, yeah, the good thing about chlorine, if there is any good things, is you can see it coming and it has a very obvious smell compared to some of the chemical weapons that are, you know, just look like water shimmering and then they barely have a smell and they kill you very quickly. Chlorine, you've at least got, you know, your warning period. But as I said, if you look, if you Google chlorine into the news, you'll be able to see the various incidents every year where people get exposed to chlorine. It's not nice. Thankfully, a lot of those are in lower concentrations where people don't die. But, you know, as I said, this is one of those things where I think you're more likely to come into contact with it, not from it being used as a chemical weapon, but simply because a lot of civil industries use it, and a lot of them are prone to having fires or leaks. So, as said, for protection from chlorine, put your mask on with um, your ABEC filter on, or just the B from ABEC for inorganic vapour. Put that on, and you should be fine. But obviously, vacate the area. And as I did mention earlier, chlorine can affect the skin, but that's generally in very high concentration. So yes, having an NBC suit with the mask would be better, but if you're evacuating the area, having a mask on would be good enough, because from what I understand, having chlorine damage to the skin isn't going to kill you. It would be very uncomfortable and nasty, but you know it takes a while to build up to damage the skin, and if you survive, that's good enough. Um, it's not one of those chemical weapons where it will cause irreversible skin damage and, um, you know, death or poisoning through skin contact. Um, in, our, in World War One, chlorine was eventually replaced, or not fully replaced, but with phosgene, which is far nastier. I'll do a note, and, you know, later video on phosgene. But again, that was a more efficient way of killing, so that's why they went away from chlorine to phosgene. But at least with chlorine, you can see it coming. 